Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to Krombat. He moves to Krombat. Nabil moves to Krombat. He moves to Krombat. He moves to Krombat. Bailey moves to Krombat. He moves to Krombat. He moves to Krombat. You've heard the words. Now it's time to own the playmat. Aaron Miller, celebrated magic artist known for some of the best magic art of all time, is launching a limited edition Krom playmat and token collection on Kickstarter. The Krombat playmat showcases Krom, Ludovic's Opus, for the very first time on a playmat. The art has been extended by Aaron to fit the playmat and it looks awesome. The playmat comes with gilded foil combat stamping and gilded signature from Aaron. Aaron has also included custom foil commander tokens for this campaign. They also include a brand new 2-2 bird for your swan song, is it themed treasure, and two new trigger warnings to keep track of your crom triggers. Multiple pledge tiers also include a random artist proof from Aaron's collection as well. Stretch goals include Curse Totem and Flowerfoot Swordmaster playmats, and there are backstock playmat options as well. Shipping and fulfillment is handled by Mythic Gaming, so you know you'll get the highest quality product when you pledge today. There are multiple tiers for all budgets and plenty of add-ons to choose from as well. The Kickstarter ends in less than a month, so grab yours while it's still active. Now. Let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan, piloting Heliod the Radiant Dawn. This deck seeks to cast and flip its commander to Heliod the Warped Eclipse. It then reduces the cost of spells and storms off at instant speed. Next, we have Chad, piloting Nadu, Winged Wisdom. This deck uses its commander's ability to gain massive card advantage. It then uses landfall triggers to gain a huge army of creatures and swings for the win. After that, we have Philip, piloting Roxanne, Starfall Savant. This deck seeks to cast Food Chain or Loop Dockside to gain infinite mana. It then casts its commander over and over to burn out the table. Finally, we have Corey, who recently placed top four in the Cowtown Throwdown in Columbus, Ohio, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus. This deck seeks to gain card advantage through its commanders and other engines. It then wins with the classic Thassa's Oracle or Underworld Breach combos. Without further ado, let's kick off this burning, bursting, busy bushel of burglars. Ryan won the Roast Yourself Challenge and gets to start us off. Ryan draws a card for turn, plays a Tundra, and passes. Chad draws and plays an island. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it to help cast his commander, Nadu, Winged Wisdom. The table starts to sweat as Chad passes. Philip draws and plays a Taiga. He casts an Arbor Elf and ends his turn. Corey draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer. He passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Frantic Search. He draws two, discards two, and untaps his lands. He taps Ancient Tomb again to cast an Arcane Signet. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it to help cast his commander, Heliod the Radiant Dawn. It resolves, and Ryan ships the turn to Chad. Chad draws and plays a Tropical Island. He casts Concordant Crossroads. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts Seeker of Skybreak. Everyone knows that this is eight cards per rotation with Nadu, so in response, Ryan casts Mindbreak Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Seeker. In response, Chad casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, targeting Mindbreak Trap. In response, Ryan casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Force. Fierce counters Force and Trap Exile Seeker. The table breathes a sigh of relief as Chad passes to Philip. At the end of Chad's turn, Philip taps Arbor Elf, since it now has haste through Concordant Crossroads, to untap his Taiga. He casts Worldly Tutor. He fetches up a Doxide Extortionist onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Philip. Philip draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Ground onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts Wild Growth. He casts Destiny Spinner. He activates Arbor Elf, untapping his Taiga. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Philip creates three treasures. All through, Philip ends his turn. Corey draws and asks the table if they would let him connect with his Ragavan. No one agrees, and Corey moves to combat. He decides to risk it and attacks Ryan with Ragavan. Ryan blocks, Ragavan dies, and Corey ends his turn. Ryan draws and moves to combat, attacking Chad with Heliod. Chad takes it, and in his second main phase, Ryan taps his Ancient Tomb and pays two life to activate Heliod, transforming it into Heliod the Warped Eclipse. Ryan gives the turn to Chad. Chad draws and plays a Mishra's Factory. He activates Mishra's Factory, turning it into a creature. He activates its second ability, targeting itself. Nadu triggers, and Chad reveals an Ancient Tomb onto the battlefield. Chad passes. Philip draws and casts his commander, Roxanne, Starfall Savant. It enters, Philip creates a meteorite, dealing two to Ryan as it enters. Next, Philip casts Teamer Sabretooth. It resolves, and Philip passes. Corey draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Corey ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He holds open mana and passes. Chad draws and taps Ancient Tomb to help bestow Springheart and Antuko, targeting Nadu. Nadu triggers, and Chad reveals a Cephalid Coliseum onto the battlefield. All through, Chad passes. 
Philip draws and activates Teemer's Sabertooth, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He recasts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Chad activates Beastra's Factory, turning it into a creature. He activates Factory's second ability, targeting itself. Now he triggers, and Chad reveals an Arbor Elf into his hand. It enters, and Philip creates five treasures. He sacks a treasure for two green through Roxanne to activate Teemer's Sabertooth, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He recasts Dockside. In response, Ryan cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Hallowed Fountain onto the battlefield, untapped, paying two life. He taps Ancient Tomb to flash in a coveted jewel. In response, Cory flashes in an Orcish Bowmasters. It enters, targeting Destiny Spinner. In response, Philip casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting the ability. It resolves, redirecting the ability to Bowmasters itself. Bowmasters dies, and Cory amasses one. Then Coveted Jewel resolves, and Ryan draws three. Unfortunately, he couldn't find what he needed, and Dockside resolves. It enters, and Philip creates seven treasures. Philip presents a loop of continually bouncing and recasting Dockside, creating infinite treasures. Philip presents another loop of bouncing and recasting Roxanne, creating meteorites, burning out the table, and Philip wins the game. Chad draws and plays a hedge maze. It enters, and Chad surveils, leaving it on top. He passes. Philip draws and plays a misty rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a lotus petal. He casts power balance. Philip passes. Cory draws and plays a hallowed fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a lotus petal. Power balance triggers, and Philip reveals an eternal scourge. Cory casts a felwar stone and ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a misty rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tundra onto the battlefield. He casts an esper sentinel. Ryan ships the turn. Chad draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City as his land for turn. He casts a Lighted Halfling. He casts a Soul Ring. Esper triggers and Ryan draws. Chad gives a turn to Philip. Philip draws, plays a Spire Garden, and passes. Cory draws and plays a Blood Crypt into play untapped, paying two life. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. Power Balance triggers and Philip reveals a Pyroblast. Cory ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays an Atacar Waste. He casts Arcane Signet. Ryan passes the turn. Chad draws and casts his commander, Nadu, Winged Wisdom. Chad passes to Philip. Philip draws, takes no actions, and passes. Cory draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Philip with Timna. Philip takes it, and Cory gains two life. In his second main phase, Cory pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond, paying the Esper tax. Cory ends his turn. Ryan draws and casts Grim Monolith. Power Balance triggers, and Philip reveals a Wheel of Fortune. Ryan passes. Chad draws, takes no actions, and passes the turn. At the end of Chad's turn, Philip casts Pyroblast, targeting Nadu, paying for Esper. Nadu triggers, and Chad reveals a Vernon Catacombs onto the battlefield. In response, Chad casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Hedge Maze as an additional cost, paying for Esper. After a lot of deliberation from the table, Crop Rotation resolves. Chad fetches up a Talon Gates of Madar onto the battlefield. It enters and targets Nadu. Nadu triggers, and Chad reveals a Snow-Covered Island onto the battlefield. Then Nadu phases out, Pyroblast fizzles, and the turn moves to Philip. Philip draws, takes no actions, and passes. Cory draws and moves to combat. He attacks Chad with Timna. Chad takes it and Cory gains two life. In his second main phase, Cory pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He plays a Gemstone Caverns for turn. Cory ships the turn. Ryan draws and casts Displacer Kitten. In response, Chad casts Pact of Negation. Esper triggers and Chad pays. In response, Ryan casts Orem's Chant, targeting Cory, locking him out of spells this turn. Then Ryan casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Pact of Negation. Unfortunately for Ryan, he forgot about Delighted Halfling on the table. So in response, Chad cracks his verdict catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. Then Chad pays for all Flusterstorm and pack counters Displacer Kitten. With nothing else, Ryan passes to Chad. Before untaps, Chad's Nadu faces back in. During his upkeep, Chad pays for Pact of Negation. He draws and casts an Arbor Elf. Chad ships the turn. Philip draws and plays the Gaia's Cradle. He passes. Cory draws and moves to combat. He attacks Philip with Timna. He takes it, and Cory gains two life. In his second main phase, he pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He plays a Badlands for turn. He casts Tainted Pact. Esper and Power Balance triggers, Philip reveals a Tinder Wall, then Ryan draws a card. Pact resolves, and Cory exiles until he reveals an Underworld Breach, putting it into his hand. He casts Underworld Breach. In response, Ryan casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling a blue card. In response, Cory casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Force. Fierce counters Force, and Underworld Breach resolves. Cory cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three black. He escapes Tainted Pact, exiling until he reveals a Brain Freeze, putting it into his hand. He casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself, milling 18. He escapes LED. He cracks it for three blue. He presents a loop of escaping Brain Freeze, milling his opponents, and escaping LED for more mana. He does this over and over, milling six of his own library to help pay for the escape costs and milling everyone else out. He escapes Wheel of Fortune. Each opponent attempts to draw from an empty library, loses, and Cory wins the game. Before Game 3, Ryan has a pre-game action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Snapcaster Mage. 
Philip draws and plays a wooded foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a soul ring. He casts an arcane signet. He casts ragavan nimble pilfer. He casts chrome mox and printing vexing shusher. Philip passes. Cory draws and plays a scalding tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a badlands onto the battlefield. Cory passes. At the end of Cory's turn, Ryan casts a turn zero mystical tutor, fetching up a time twister onto the battlefield. Ryan draws and plays a planes. He casts a mana crypt. He casts time twister. In response, Philip casts lightning bolt, dealing three to Ryan. Then each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their libraries and draws seven. Finished up, Ryan passes. Chad draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts an Arbor Elf and passes. Philip draws and plays a Carplusion Forest. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Tender Wall. He casts a Destiny Spinner. He casts his commander, Roxanne, Starfall Savant. It enters and Philip creates a Meteorite. It enters, killing Arbor Elf. He moves to combat and attacks Cory with Ragavan. Cory takes it, Philip creates a treasure, and Cory exiles a Mox Diamond off of the top of his library. Philip passes the turn. Cory draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He casts Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts Arcane Signet. He cracks Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a plateau onto the battlefield. He casts a Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Deflecting Swat. He casts Mystic Remora. Cory ships the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays an Island. He casts Rhystic Study. Remora triggers and Cory draws. Ryan casts Spellskite. Ryan gives the turn to Chad. Chad draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Wizard as it enters. Chad passes. During his upkeep, Philip wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Roxanne and Cory with Ragavan. Roxanne triggers and Philip creates a Meteorite. Meteorite enters and hits Chad for two. Then Ryan and Cory take it. Ragavan triggers. Philip creates a treasure and Cory exiles a Tundra. In a second main phase, Philip casts Orcish Lumberjack. Rhystic triggers and Ryan draws. He casts Finale of Devastation where X equals 4. Mystic and Rhystic trigger and in response, Philip flashes in a Dualcaster Mage. Rhystic triggers and Philip pays. Dualcaster resolves and copies Finale of Devastation. Then Philip fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. It enters and Philip creates 5 treasures. Philip then pays for Rhystic, Cory draws through Mystic, and the original Finale resolves. Philip fetches up a Teamer Sabertooth onto the battlefield. He activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He recasts Dockside, creating 5 more treasures. He presents a loop of bouncing and recasting Dockside through Teamer Sabertooth, paying for Rhystic each time, creating infinite treasures. He activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing and recasting Roxanne over and over. When Roxanne enters, Philip creates a Meteorite, pinging each opponent over and over, until they are dead, and Philip wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games tonight. Congrats to Philip and Corey on their wins. Philip had great starts in games 1 and 3 and capitalized on his windows and advantages to close out the game with Teamer and Dockside loops. In game 2, Corey did a great job of keeping a tight breach line to ensure that he had enough to mill out the table. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Destiny Spinner. This card enabled both of Philip's wins in tonight's games. It wasn't heard on the video, but both times people had answers to Philip's loops in their hands, but Destiny Spinner prevented his creatures from being countered. Under Destiny Spinner, Philip was able to perform his loops with relative security tonight. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.